All right, one last section in this chapter, RC circuits, which is relevant to the lab that you'll be doing in this, in this uh, area. The idea here is you're going to have a, a battery, a resistor, and a capacitor. You say, that's why they call it an RC circuit. And I say, yes, it is. RC because it has an R in it, and a resistor, and it has a capacitor. State the charge and voltage of a charging capacitor. So shown barely here on the side is a little gray strip that, uh, that's a switch. When I close that switch, then this battery starts to drive a current in this circuit. And that current charges up this capacitor. And the, um, but the charge of the capacitor starts out at zero. It doesn't have any charge on it until you flip that switch and the battery starts to, to put charge, plus charge on the left side of the capacitor and minus charge on the right side of the capacitor. And this uh, charge, as a function of time, increases from zero, like I mentioned before, there's no charge on the capacitor initially, and then it comes up to some um, asymptotic value of Q0. So that's the final value, but it approaches it asymptotically. It never actually reaches there. It's an exponential function. And this is the exponential function. Q equals Q0 times 1 minus e to the minus t over RC. This RC is called the time constant. And uh, so that's the charge. That's the time-dependent charge. This Q is a function of time, and it's represented graphically over here. It starts at zero and slowly asymptotically reaches Q0. And the voltage does a similar thing. How do we know that? Well, C is charge over the voltage. So the charge equals C times the voltage. But C is a constant. So whatever the charge does, the voltage is going to do something similar. And sure enough, it does. So if you've got this equation already down in your head, Q equals Q0 times 1 minus E to the minus T over RC, then this one is similar. V equals V0 times the quantity 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. And there is a mistake. This is minus T t over rc. So there's two minus signs in this equation. 1 minus e to the minus t over rc. If you don't have that minus in, sign in there, it's not going to work. Right. So as t goes to infinity, as this time approaches infinity, the charge will approach q0 and the voltage will approach v0. So like we said, v, q0 is the final charge, v0 is the final voltage, T is the time measured in seconds. R is the resistance. That's this resistor right here, resistance of the resistor in the circuit. And C is the capacitance measured in farads. Um, what about if you discharge a capacitor? So take the battery out of here. Take a, ba a, a capacitor that's charged. And um, it already initially has some charge on it. You shut, you close off the switch, then what's going to happen is the charge is going to bleed off through that resistor and eventually disappear. So now Q0, instead of being the final charge, is the initial charge. So whatever is the initial charge on that capacitor is Q0. And then that charge decreases with time until there's no charge on the capacitor because you bled it all off through the resistor and there's no battery to keep it, keep it going. And there's a mistake on this one also. That's a minus, and that's a minus here and here. So it's e to the minus t over rc. And I'll correct that in the PowerPoint before I upload it. So the um, charge as a function of time is a negative exponential e to the minus t over rc. Voltage does similarly. And now the q naught and v naught are the initial charges and voltages. OK, here's a demonstration.
This is a demonstration of the RC circuit, a circuit with a resistor and a capacitor in it, and also a demonstration of the energy of a capacitor. What I have here are two circuits. The one that's closest to you is this circuit here with two capacitors. The blue ring here indicates a one farad capacitor and this other blue ring is the other capacitor. And as you can see, the current is gonna pass into this capacitor, out of that capacitor, into this second capacitor, and then on throughout the circuit. So that's the series circuit here. I have a 15 volt source. I have two one farad capacitors, very powerful. I'm gonna to have to be careful about where I touch here. Current through the first, current through the second. I've got a switch here that controls when I begin to allow the current to pass through those capacitors. I also have here a, uh, a circuit in which the two capacitors are in parallel. So the effective configuration is up here that the voltage source, which is this guy right here, passes, uh, splits into two pieces, one that goes through the first capacitor and one that goes through the second capacitor. So the voltages across these two capacitors are going to be the same at all times. And what we've done in class is to understand how, the, what the equivalent capacitance would be. For this parallel circuit, the two capacitors are in parallel with each other, actually add together to form one uh, effective capacitor that's two farads. As opposed to two capacitors that are in series, which uh, you have to add up one over this capacitance plus one over that capacitance equals one over the equivalent capacitance, which gives you an equivalent capacitance of one half a farad. One over one plus one over one equals one over the equivalent capacitance. One plus one is two, one over that is a half. So the equivalent capacitance here is less for the series than it is for the parallel. And the other piece that we're gonna be able to see here, and it, this pertains to the, to the lab for the RC circuit, and that is the energy stored in a capacitor. The energy is one half times the capacitance times the voltage squared. So for, for this circuit, the series circuit, the capacitance is half a farad that we put in here for the energy. As opposed for the parallel circuit, you have a two farad capacitor, you'll have a lot more energy stored in this parallel circuit. And the time constant, and this governs how long it takes to charge these, capacitor, these capacitors up to their maximum potential. That goes like the resistance in the circuit, whatever that resistance turns out to be for this particular circuit, which is the same for both circuits times the capacitance. So not only will the energy stored in this parallel circuit be larger than in the series circuit, but also the time constant. It will take longer for them to charge up because this time constant is proportional to the capacitance. So let's do series first. So what I'm gonna do is to press the switch to begin charging up these two capacitors. And what you'll be able to see through the side camera is this um, needle which measures the current in the circuit as it is charging up. When I first press the, the switch here, you'll see this needle go all the way to the right and get pegged on the right. But then after a short amount of time, it will leave that pegged position and slowly go down until these capacitors are, are fully charged. And what I'll do is during that charging um, time, I'll count how long it takes to charge it up, which would be an indication of the time constant here. Zero, one, two, maybe about three seconds. Now I release this switch and allow 
these capacitors to discharge through this resistor. Zero, one, two, three, four, four or five seconds or so to discharge all of that charge from the capacitors through this resistor, which is a light bulb. Now doing it with the parallel, we expect uh, a lot more from the parallel circuit. We've got a larger capacitance. It's actually four times larger than what we had for the series. So we'll expect four times the energy and four times the amount of time required to charge and discharge. So I'll press this switch and you'll watch that needle go up. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe about twelve seconds. Then releasing it, we'll count how long it takes. And notice how bright the bulb is compared to the other bulb. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three. So we're about out of, of energy by now. So this parallel, parallel circuit carries more energy, stores more energy in the capacitors that are synced up in parallel compared with series. And the time constant is longer. Okay, uh, a pacemaker uses RC circuits to control the timing of voltage pulses to regulate the cycle of a malfunctioning heart. So that pacemaker has these RC circuits in it and um, gets that heart pumping in the right right rhythm. Um, just a little note that you need to have proper electrical grounding. Um, capacitors are very, very dangerous. Uh, there are experiments in the basement, uh, the physics building where you guys do your labs with large capacitor banks. Once you charge those up, you definitely don't want to touch the two uh, terminals. I um, toured uh, a tokamak facility a plasma tokamak facility in, in Texas one time, and they told me that they no longer run the tokamak while they're doing tours because once the, the tour guide pointed at a capacitor bank, the capacitor arced through his finger and killed him uh, during the tour. So you definitely want to have a lot of respect for capacitors. A lot of you have big capacitors, one farad or more, in your cars for your um, subwoofer. Uh, you definitely want to be really, really careful with those things. They hold a lot of charge. And if that passes through your heart, you're dead. So grounding capacitors, be careful.